Hi, welcome back to another Work in Progress Wednesday, or should it be Technology Tuesday, maybe? Because we're actually in the sort of high-tech department of our workshop. So this is where we've got the computers, and this is where we've also got our lasers. I say lasers because up until recently we've only had a CO2 laser, which we've had for a couple of years now. Now the CO2 laser is fantastic and we got one with quite a big bed so that we could do big objects in there. So primarily the CO2 is used for cutting acrylics, cutting wood, obviously thin wood, for putting logos into materials like wood or leather and things like that. So we bought it so that we could customise some of our crook knives and our carving tools, put people's names on, things like that. Obviously we use the CO2 to put our little logo in there as well. Um, you can use it for cutting and marking leather as well, so this is part of the reason why we got the CO2. Now, you can mark steel with it as well, and that's part of the reason why we bought it. We thought we'd be able to use it for customising, sort of engraving and etching on the actual metal blades of the tools that we make. To use the CO2 to actually mark steel you end up having to use either a ceramic tape or a ceramic spray and basically you use the laser to basically heat up and bond that ceramic to the steel. And it works, it's totally fine, but what I found was is it lays on the surface of the steel. So obviously if people are out in the woods and they're using their tools a lot, just wear can remove that ceramic spray or if you want to clean your knife, if you're using like a Gary Flex, you will eventually, over years, remove that ceramic spray. So what I was ending up using was the CO2 to make stencils and go back to my old method of actually using an etching machine to chemically remove the steel. It did work, again, a little bit fiddly and a little bit time consuming. So you may have followed us on Instagram and you may have seen a few different laser companies come and exhibit what they had on offer and basically it was such a big outlay for a fiber laser that we primarily are just gonna use for marking our blades. We put it on the back burner until I was contacted by a company on Instagram and they said that they did a more sort of entry lever level fiber laser. So kind of an exciting week last week. We had this big crate arrive with this new fiber laser. A little bit smaller and a little bit different setup to the CO2. It isn't in an enclosure. You've just literally got this head. This is basically where the laser fires out from, and you've got like a almost like a PC tower that's got all the sort of technology in it. And you have to use this sort of manual winding wheel to actually adjust the height and the focus of the laser, whereas the CO2 does it sort of all for you, really. Um, but so far, I'm not a technical whiz kid, um, but so far I'm pretty happy with the results that it's given us. Uh, a few guys, a few friends on Instagram that are knife makers that have also got these machines really helped, gave me some help with the software that I was having issues with and also changing some of the settings to get some of the really good results on etching the steel. So I thought it'd be fun to show you the latest addition to the techno technical uh, department in the workshop and show you how we will now go about marking our blades and how we use it for marking some of the other little features that we've been doing on the knife. So, Obviously, this hasn't got any safety enclosure, so you end up having to wear safety goggles when you run this laser. Shouldn't hurt your eyes through watching it through a screen, but if you actually uh, get that laser through your uh, unprotected eyes, then it's going to do you a lot of damage. So you've got to remember to wear safety goggles. But we'll fire up the tower and we'll show you how this thing actually marks our logo. So the software that you end up using with the fiber laser is different to the one that we use on the CO2 laser. So this is a program called EasyCAD and I've got some of my logos in there. So this is our Celtic Knot logo with my name underneath it. That's the one that we put on our blade. Now the advantage of the fiber laser is it's very easy to sort of position exactly where your mark's going to go. So you can have this feature where you can hit this and it projects where that etch is going to actually happen. So say I've got my blade, this is already ground and pretty much polished and it's projecting where that logo is so I can just literally lay the blade exactly where I want it and know that I'm not going to be putting it in the wrong place and that's the beauty of a fibre laser is it gives me that sort of uh, sort of, sort of pre-etch before it actually burns into the steel so I can get it exactly how I want it. 
So we're pretty happy with the position. It's showing me where that logo is going to go. So then I turn that off. I will turn my extractor on. That's that pipe there. That will take some of the fumes away. So we'll turn that on. And then we'll hit mark. So it'll take a few minutes to do it, but it should leave a really nice deep etch then. So it takes a few minutes, I think that actually took five minutes to etch this particular mark. Now obviously you can change the settings, you can do very quick marks, you can do very shallow etches. But what I've been playing around with is I wanted to try and recreate how the actual electrochemical etch leaves the impression on the blade. So what I wanted to do was try and eat into the steel, so the logo is well into the steel itself, and then with the final pass that we did on the machine where it was sort of slower and a lot sort of less intense where it wasn't removing a lot of steel it was just cleaning up the bottom of the etch and leaving a nice black finish in there so I can take it off the bed now and at this stage if I run my finger over it there's almost like a slight burr on there where it's actually sort of removed some of the steel and it doesn't look brilliant at this stage but what I will do now is I'll take it downstairs and I will give it a light pass with a few bits of sandpaper just to take that burr off and it will show you how beautiful that, that etch that it puts on there. So I've got some sandpaper on my on my uh, bench here with this magnet on and I can do a few passes and without too much effort it just takes that slightly raised burr off that logo. go over to a slightly finer grip and what I'm doing is I'm trying to put the final sort of hand rubbed finish on the blade at the same time so I'm consciously making really nice straight movements with the sandpaper to put that nice even finish on there That's taking that burr off. So I'll just give that a light clean up and you'll be able to see that logo, how it came out from the laser. So we've cleaned up that bit of sand, uh, sanding marks, that dust that was all sort of in the etch. So I just use a bit of cloth and a bit of WD-40 and you can really start to see now that lovely hand rubbed finish that you get on the flats and then that really nice crisp logo, that real nice deep, deep etch. So that's why I like the fibre laser is now if I run my finger over it I can actually feel that there's a sort of depth to that that logo so you know it's never going to come off and you get that real nice black finish in the bottom of it. So that's the logo on a polished finish of the blade so obviously that's that hand rub finish that nice silver finish which a lot of people like you get that real high contrast with that dark logo and then also I've been playing around and putting my logo on some blades when we use the acid stonewash finish so that dark finish so a bit more subtle the overall finish of this knife gives it a more sort of I suppose user friendly look really so this is on RWL34 with that nice acid stonewash and it kind of makes the bevels show up really nicely as well. And the great thing about the fibre laser is if you want to do something that's kind of intricate. So at the moment we're working on the Ed Stafford signature knives. So obviously we've got to put Ed's signature actually onto the blade itself. So making the stencils and using the CO2 and using the etching machine was quite a sort of tricky, laborious process and it could go quite horribly wrong. 
but now with the fiber laser we can put Ed's signature on the blades really easily and they come out really nice and clear as well. So that's what we've been working on this Wednesday, kind of trying to learn how to work computers and also get the settings right so we get really nice consistent results with our etching process. Obviously I'm not a laser expert, this is just my tiny little input from buying these two types of lasers. We'll put a link into the guys that helped us out, Ben and Justin out in the States, so we'll put a link to their work as well so you can see what kind of thing they do. And yeah, thanks guys for all the help with uh, the settings and the software and all that kind of jazz. But we'll probably do a few more videos when I'm a bit more familiar with the software and the laser and what it can do. We'll do some sort of updated videos as well. But hopefully you've enjoyed seeing what's going on in the workshop. Remember to subscribe to the, ch to the channel if you want to see more videos like this on knife making or craft work. And uh, yeah, we'll hope to see you next week. Thanks again.